win tonight, they'd go up four places to seven. Incidentally, Paul Merson, who's been very apprehensive about this return to his old uh, stamping ground, didn't go out to warm up with the rest of the Villa players. Two old Liverpool club mates, David James and Paul Ince, in a warm embrace on a pretty cold night here on Teesside. Well, Middlesbrough are in free fall, heading dangerously close to the relegation places and really desperate for a win. Aston Villa are the opposite, upwardly mobile and with a European place in their sights. So it's a big night for both clubs and we'll have all the action live in just a moment. Our live Monday night football from the Carling Premiership is Middlesbrough against Aston Villa. Sky Digital Channel 404, remember, gives you Sky Sports Extra and the latest addition to our interactive coverage, Player Cam. First up tonight, we'll be following Paul Gascoigne. Let's join our match commentators, Clive Allen and Alan Parry. Thank you, Richard. Welcome back to Teesside. Well, Paul Merson, understandably to me, was a little bit apprehensive about his welcome back to Teesside. And I have to say, he's already had a very hostile reception from the Middlesbrough fans the moment he trotted out and his name was read out over the loudspeakers. Nothing that he wasn't expecting. Well, with only one win in their last ten league games, Middlesbrough are in desperate need of inspiration tonight. Perhaps Gaza can answer their prayers. It's his first appearance for nine weeks. He's been laid low by a knee injury and a virus, so his fitness obviously has to be in question. An apprehensive night ahead for Brian Robson. An honest guy who demands and usually gets the best from his players, but results have not been going their way over the last couple of months. In addition to their league form, of course, they've been knocked out of both the domestic cup competitions by teams from the nationwide, Wrexham in the FA Cup, Tranmere in the Worthington Cup, and their only Premiership win in the last ten was against Tottenham Hotspur. Really, no exaggeration to say that Middlesbrough can't afford to lose here tonight. Aston Villa in their chain strip of a blue and black, and the man in charge, Alan Wilkie. It's remarkable to think that Middlesbrough were as high as second in the table in the early weeks of this season after they won three of their first four games, however. They did start in a similar fashion the last time they were relegated from the Premiership, a rather worrying statistic for them. Southgate slices his first clearance, back in the side having missed the victory at Watford with a groin injury. Smiles and a much more relaxed look on the face of John Gregory these days. He's battled his way through a very difficult period. Taking and up so his, uh, his team. A custom position in the director's box now, obviously feels that's... Uh, that's a lucky omen, having been banished there, being suspended, the results picked up, so uh, starting in the director's box this evening. First touch for Paul Merson, first barrage of boos inevitably greeted it. Oh, it seems a shame to me when players do go back to former grounds and get that kind of reception, but in his case, it's not that surprising because he did apparently, reportedly anyway, have a few critical things to say about life at Middlesbrough. Stone wins the first aerial duel with Ince and goes in with him again, but the free kick's gone to Middlesbrough. Juninho in possession. And called in possession by Steve Stone. Watang then dispossessed by Fleming. Hester's clearance. Campbell could only help it forward. It came off the shoulder of Barry for a Middlesbrough throw. I think even the early signs are that Middlesbrough are lacking in confidence. It's not the fast start that you would see from a team confident playing at home. And Villa, I'm sure, quite happy to soak up this early control possession from Middlesbrough, but really not threatening. Paul well, Gascoigne on the ball. Now Juninho. Characteristic run by the little Brazilian. And the challenge right on the edge of the box was mighty close to a penalty. And in fact, in the end, Mr. Wilkie didn't even give a free kick. It'll be interesting to see that one again. Well, he was positive as soon as he picked up the ball. It's what the fans love to see. Runs directly at the heart of the Villa defence. Barry is right foot out, 
I think probably because Janino's knocked it out at his feet and he wouldn't can, can really keep possession that the referee gave, didn't give the free kick. That's Joe Chim trying to cause problems at the other end. And Beresford, I don't think, saw Joe Chim coming in on him. He must have realised late and sliced the ball straight to Steve Stone. It's his first appearance in the Middlesbrough goal for 15 months, would you believe? Well, again, just maybe a little bit apprehensive. Took that extra second, the extra touch. And was Joe Chim nearly managed to block the clearance. Now, there he are, Delaney out on the right-hand side, keeping out Watson at the moment, though Watson, in fact, is suspended and wouldn't have been able to play tonight anyway. Steve Stoke. Paul Merson, that's a lovely little ball for Delaney. Plenty in the middle for him to try and pick out. And he's won the first corner of the game. Well, it was Paul Gascoigne who made up ground to stop the cross from Delaney. I wouldn't be surprised if he's twisted an ankle, though, as he's tried to block the cross. As we see here, made up good ground. But I think he takes a knock on that left ankle. Oh, the very last right thing they would have wanted. Booze as Paul Merson took the corner, then cheers when he got it all wrong. But he can have another go. Carboni on the heel. And Merson with the first genuine shot of the game. Pallister with a clearance. And then a foul by Steve Stone, who uh, will equally get a hot reception as a jury. But that's Paul not Gaston. what uh, Ryan Robson wanted, Clyde. It wasn't, and he looks far from happy. He's not moving too freely. And when we saw the incident, it looks he, uh, not only a knock, but maybe a twist as he fell under the challenge on Delaney. He's only had one reserve game and a practice match behind doors in the last uh, eight weeks and just a, a few days training in preparation for this game. It's not nearly enough, obviously, but uh, to repeat, Brian Robson's squad stretched to the very limit. And it's been like that for a couple of months, really. Here's Fleming. Ed is Fleming himself as... Uh, Overcome some serious knee problems, which kept him out for eight months in total. Delaney having to go a long way back here to retrieve possession for Villa. Leaves the clearance to David James. Pallister's header back in. Clearance by Southgate. Now Ince, dispossessed in the centre by Boateng. Delaney. He's going running a little more freely at the moment. But in trouble there against Carboni. And was very relieved to hear the whistle go. Free kick in Middle Middlesbrough. I think there's one thing with Paul Gascoigne. It doesn't matter how fit he is. The one thing he always wants is the ball to his feet. He loves to have possession. Trying to make things happen. Even from deep positions like that. He will take risks. It was only Carboni stepping across him, an obstruction whereby he won the ball. Delaney, Stone, lovely little flick, finds Carboni. Joe Chim ahead of him. Good early challenge by Pallister. Well, I don't need to tell you when Merson's in possession, the crowd's booze will do that job. Jochim's not likely to win many headers tonight, but his pace could cause problems for Middlesbrough's back four, a system they're not used to playing. Now, they've only played it once before this season. It was in a one-all draw at Bradford. It will certainly be an interesting match-up, the front two of Villa, very mobile, um, two big centre-halves for Middlesbrough, whether they can contain the pace and trickery of Joe Chim and Carboni. One ball by Pallister over the head of O'Neill. Gascoigne. Well, Somerville battled well to keep possession there and find Juninho.
shot blocked by Southgate. This is Fleming under pressure from Carboni. And the ball had crossed the line before Fleming reached it. Jochim, promising looking move this for Aston Villa, he's still going. Well, it took a desperate late challenge by Fester to stop him. And in with a glorious ball to Juninho. Campbell ahead of him and O'Neill free on the right. Good defensive work by the three centre-halves at Villa. Immediately, uh, Juninho now picking it up from a deeper position and running. They close ranks really crowded him out well on that occasion. Orlins has given it away to Boateng. Delaney in space. Oh, that's good play. Crowd appreciated that from young Somerville. And then a foul on another youngster, Andy Campbell in the middle by Boateng. Started the last four games now, Andy Campbell, Brian Dean out injured. And tonight also Hamilton turn the recall unavailable. He's suspended. Lemmy, Juninho. That deft little change of pace, but he's given it away this time. Merson. Carboni to his right, Jochim to his left. What a very good tackle by Palace there. He showed him where he wanted to go, Alan, didn't he? And Merson looked at the space, tried to attack it, but beautifully timed tackle from Gary Pallister. Colin Cooper blocked from making further progress by Cooper. Juninho takes over. A long ball for Campbell was too long. What a crucial role this man has tonight, playing in that withdrawal position. You already sense that anything that's going to happen for Middlesbrough will come through this little dynamic player. If he gets the opportunity to run at defense, defenders, he will, and try to make things happen, try to open the Villa defense up. Southgate begins another Villa attack. Gareth Barry who might well come under uh, the notice of Kevin Keegan for the England squad for that Argentina match. Meantime, Carboni has got clear here and might score. And has. First goal to Aston Villa. Benito Carboni scores his first for them in the Premiership. Well, we talked about the combination of Joe Chim and Carboni. It was a dreadful mistake by Fester. He tries to chest it when really he needs to clear it. Miscontrols it, Jochim helps it forward for Carboni, he's not going to pass up the opportunity. Still had a lot to do on the finish. Great little touch from Jochim. Composure for Carboni, and the power beats keeper Beresford to put Villa in front. The very start that Middlesbrough didn't want. Well, Carboni had not scored in 12 previous league games. He got that hat-trick, of course, in the FA Cup against Leeds. His only other goal in 15 appearances was also in the FA Cup against Darlington. And that'll certainly help the contract negotiations, I'm sure. But uh, very anxious to sign him on a permanent basis. When you talk about a team's confidence being low, Alan, but when you make a mistake like that and you're punished for it, it really is difficult, and it's going to take a lot of character now for Middlesbrough to fight their way back into this game. A very subdued mood by Keith O'Neill with a decent effort, but always going wide. A simple free kick just rolled 
onto O'Neill's favoured left foot, but as you see, slices across it with the outside of the left boot, always going away from James's upright. Well, he looked pretty uh, glum before the match. He looks even sadder now. Giving it away to Kubek, Carboni, giving him an uncomfortable right. And O'Neill, in the end, used his hand to control the ball. This is only the second time he's played up front, incidentally, for Middlesbrough. Though he did uh, play there quite a few times, Clark for Norwich. Yes, he's played in a, in a forward position, but um, obviously unaccustomed to it since he's been here at Borough. As we discussed earlier on, uh, certainly Brian Robson down to the bare bones in terms of players available for selection. Well, there's still a big crowd of around 30,000, and it seems there always will be here on Teesside. They're very loyal supporters, but their patience is being stretched at the moment, that's for sure. And Villa will do their utmost to stretch it even further tonight. Stroking the ball around nicely now, Villa. But Juninho has it back for Middlesbrough. Here's O'Neill. Good challenge by Gareth Barry. He just did enough. Delaney finding a lot of room on that uh, right-hand side. Looking for the run by Joe Chim. Snowbell got it away. Gascoigne immediately under pressure. O'Neill by Gareth Southgate, the Villa skipper. I think it's quite clear, Alan, that um, Borough are, are unbalanced down that left hand side with O'Neill now playing further forward. Paul Gascoigne's being pulled out to the left hand side. Cooper, although has played fullback in his career, really is a, is a centre half and has played with alongside Pallister and Fester at the heart of the Borough defence. It is a problem for them at the moment. It seems as if Fitter are looking to exploit that area every opportunity. Of course, on the left side. That's a good ball as well for Joe Chim. He's got the pace to reach it. Only Carboni forward at the moment, but uh, plenty arriving now. One of them here is Merson. And the crowd enjoyed the challenge that dispossessed him. Coming in from Somerville. There's Carboni again, the goal scorer. That's a useful ball in. Steve Stone, he's done well here, Stone, he's done very well. But in the end, one man, too many. Sky Digital viewers watching on Sky Sports Extra. And look forward to our player Cam keeping a close watch on Paul Merson for the next 15 minutes or so. James with all the time in the world and here's another young man who always seems to have time on the ball Gareth Barry offside decision in fact the uh, referee ruling that it had gone out of play before that he's given Butter the throw good ball down the line by Gascoigne O'Neill. Carboni gets there first. Southgate with an excellent ball out to Merson. Delaney in support down the right-hand side. Making up a lot of ground. Merson's seen him. Jochim in the box. Merson shot. Well, it was a swift counter, a break from Villa once again. And again, acres of room on the right-hand side. Merson slides in Delaney, looks to maybe knock it in behind the defence, first of all, cuts it back for Merson. And unaccustomedly for Paul Merson, doesn't hit the target from the edge of the box. It's his first return here since his transfer some 15 months ago, Paul Merson. He was uh, injured 
when uh, Villa came here last season. Barry. And usually for Carboni, he miscontrols it. Fleming. The ball to his Republic of Ireland uh, teammate, Keith O'Neill. Juninho wants it and plays it first time to Ince. Back it goes to Ince. Good move by Middlesbrough. Well, best spell of passing from, from Middlesbrough. Good flick from Janino, knocked down by Ince. One two with Campbell, but unfortunately not on Ince's favoured side. And the left foot strike, very, very difficult to execute. The half volley slices it wide. O'Neill, good challenge by Ahio. Now Stone, the ball down the outside for Joe Jim, who'll keep going here. It's quite an unusual combination of strikers, I guess. Uh, Joe Jim and Carboni, both of them are only about, what, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, tall. I think the thing is, Alan, as long as you know exactly how to play, how to get service into them, the right sort of service, they're always going to be... Uh, a difficult combination to handle for two centre-halves. Villa at the moment certainly are playing everything along the floor to great effect. Over on the offside this time, the uh, tall option, of course, of leading goal-scorer Dion Dublin is not an option for John Gregory at the moment, though uh, good news that Dion is back doing some light training again and maybe, maybe, could even reappear before the end of the season. I think it's just great news that he's back training and jogging, Alan, after the severity of his injury. Here's Pallister. And all the hallmarks of a team lacking confidence, I'm afraid, are there to see in Middlesbrough's case. It's a good kick, though, by Beresford. Oh, and the header on by O'Neill was excellent and almost picked out Campbell. Joe Chip. Nino determined that was going to be his, and forward he goes. Now Summerbell. Gascoigne. Summerbell continues the attack down the left hand side. And the cross was excellent, and almost turned into his own net by Barry. Well, that really was a sensational cross by Keith O'Neill. Borough get the overload on the left-hand side. O'Neill whips in a brilliant cross, and I'm not so sure. Well, I've got to give Barry credit there, because I thought it maybe it hit him and went wide, but I think he actually guides it with his right foot just off of the outside of the post. Give him the benefit of the doubt. Good clearance. Good clearance. It could have been a horror of an own goal, but he got it just right. Gascoigne's just uh, left the field for a bit of treatment. He's back on again. Summerbell did well. Here is Gascoigne. Ince loses possession. Arista wins it back again. Juninho, great skill from him. Now Pallister. Pallister with a long ball. And David James, very cool and calm. That's good keeping, Alan, because without a doubt he gave Echiog a, a good call because a ball there, he should never be allowed to bounce, but James was coming to claim it. And again, I think that shows his newfound confidence. Villa with a good record against Middlesbrough. They beat them 1-0 at Villa Park in August, unbeaten in their last three games against them, and just one defeat in the last 13 meetings. Good running from Steve Stone. Joe Jim in the middle, right coming in on the back post. Juninho's got support this time. And picks out Fleming. Did really well there, Fleming. It's an awkward ball to take. Juninho in possession again. Even away though to Southgate. Nino's absolutely furious with Campbell. He wanted him just to stand and make a wall for him to play off of Alan. Played it in. Campbell's moving. Move breaks down. Midway 
through the first half. And Lord Hill have scored first. Middlesbrough have livened up in the last few minutes, Clive. Yes, they have, but nothing more than you would expect. They've certainly got to take a few chances. They've got to try and get themselves back into the game. And I do think that is the man, Janino. They've got to get the ball to every opportunity. to do that a few minutes ago and ended up giving the ball away. Carboni scored. The linesman's flagged from the fence here and Mr. Wilkie has given the decision. Whatever it might have been, it's a free kick to Middlesbrough. Well, he's given the decision for the challenge. I think he just tried for a couple of seconds to let play go on, but uh, Burrow didn't gain any advantage, so pulled it back. Let's go and make some room for himself. An awkward ball, though, for Juninho to control. Uh, in theory, should have a comfortable night in terms of heading the ball away up against uh, Carboni and Joe Chim, and so far has in that respect. That's going with the ball over the top, looking for Campbell. Southgate picks it off easily. Is right. Good tackle by Pallister, but it took the ball straight to Merson. Now Joe Chim. Another fine challenge, and that's another injury, I fear, because some of them went down very awkwardly then. Quickly back on his feet, though. Now Juninho. And Fester caught in possession again by Carboni. Merson. A long-range shot by Boateng. Well, Gianluca Festa has already been punished for an early mistake and you would have thought he'd be looking to play the ball sharply and quickly and not take too many chances and it was Carboni again who was quickly onto it. But this time Villa couldn't make Borough pay for the earlier mistake. A wild shot from Boateng from range that really is never going to trouble Beresford. Cooper, now Campbell gets it back from Gascoigne. There's certainly been some bright movement from Middlesbrough in the uh, Villa half of the field. It's defensively where they've looked very uncertain. And they all won a header, but no problem for David James, who gets Alan Wright moving on the counter-attack. Oh, dear. That's an embarrassment for a normally very consistent... Player Alan Wright slicing that one into the crowd. Gas going. Fleming. Campbell in the middle. So too was in, but he wasted the opportunity. I think Paul Gascoigne is becoming more and more frustrated in that midfield area. When looking forward at the moment, he doesn't seem to have too many targets which to hit, whether it's because O'Neill is unaccustomed to playing in that role. Campbell moving, I think, at the moment, he's looking for a standing target. Someone he can get the ball into at feet who can hold it up further up the field for Borough. That's not happening at the moment. The ball had just crossed the line there before Delaney uh, intervened. It, and that's always an indication of a side, isn't it? Uh, lacking confidence. And Cooper managed to give it away from the throw in, and there's another clumsy ball. Fester hooking it away this time. Well, it's Paul Gascoigne on that occasion, playing the ball back square across his own danger area. 
Festa hurried to hook it away. Gazza acknowledging that it was a dreadful pass. Merson's free kick picks out right. It's a terrific ball if it stays in. No, nope. just a little bit too far for Delaney. John Gregory coming up to a couple of years in charge of uh, Villa now and uh, having weathered the storm, so to speak, of those poor results a couple of months ago. His team look uh, on course for a decent end to the season. Remember, if they win tonight, they will go up to seventh place in the table. And who would have believed that uh, just a few weeks ago, Clyde? Well, it's quite remarkable how things turn around because uh, John Gregory said himself, you're only one game away from a disaster, one bad defeat, but... Um, his team, even after that, to Worthington Cup exit and trials and tribulations, have bounced back in the league and with a great opportunity now to finish up seventh if the, if the result stays the same as it is now, right now. Gascoigne's free kick, headed clear by Ehio, back in by Paul Ince. And Southgate got it away second time. Easy for Ehio. And the head tennis game continues. Crowd getting frustrated with Middlesbrough at the moment. That's better, that's the kind of challenge they wanted to see from Ince. And O'Neill takes on the nearest defender. I think the thing is, if they keep firing the ball into the heart of the Villa defence like that, there's without a doubt one of their greatest strengths is the three central defenders. Paul Ince at least trying to make things happen positive, getting onto the loose ball quickly. But Southgate once again marshalling the defence superbly well with Echiog alongside him. In fact, uh, Middlesbrough are up against the defence tonight. It, it has few equals in the Premiership. Only Liverpool and Chelsea have a better defensive record. They've conceded just 23 goals in 24 games, Villa. Joe Chip Carboni. And wins it back again, he's being a real nuisance to those defenders. Here's Stone. Merson in an advanced position here, he tried to pick him out near post. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what, misery I, if he got a goal. Yeah, again, they're springing the, down the right-hand side, and Stone had a great opportunity to pick Jochim out just behind Merson, who was bombing into that six-yard box. And now a chance for O'Neill on the counter-attack for Middlesbrough. Gascoigne takes over. Lovely skill, Janini on the left, Campbell the only man forward at the moment, now Fleming has gone into the area for Middlesbrough, but they've had to go backwards to keep possession with Somerville. Well, Sky Digital viewers watching on Sky Sports Extra, the subject of our player cam for the next quarter of an hour is Middlesbrough's Paul Ince. Well done by Villa so far, Alan. You can just sense there's real silence to the crowd and for the away team that is really sweet because they feel that they've done the job that they've come to do. They've got themselves in front. Yeah, a very subdued atmosphere from a crowd of around 30,000. Given the free kick there against Delaney. Lester making his way forward. He's got uh, something to make up for as well after the mistake that led to Carboni's goal. O'Neill's winning a fair few headers, but so far none of them have caused a problem to David James. This is the difference between the two teams. Benito Carboni strike from the edge of the box, a dreadful mistake by Festa. 
punished. Good combination, Joe Chimond. That man Carboni fires Villa into the lead. And the irony was uh, two great pals, the Italians, of course, Carboni and Festa were deep in conversation as the teams were warming up about half an hour before the kickoff. I don't think that was on the agenda. Jochen going in hard for the same ball there. A measure of how hard a problem Middlesbrough have got now is the fact that Aston Villa have not, yet, uh, have not let in more than one goal in their last nine Premiership games. So for Middlesbrough to turn this round into a victory now is going to take some achievement. I think the problem for Brian Robson also is that he doesn't have too many other options. It's a relatively inexperienced bench for Middlesbrough, and as I mentioned before, kickoff. A couple of the players, Phil Stamp and uh, reserve keeper Ben Roberts, shouldn't really be there. They've both uh, only just come back after injuries, and in the normal run of things, wouldn't have been considered tonight. Fester's clearance over the head of Campbell. The service to him has not been too clever so far. It's been easy at the back for Villa. Carboni looking particularly lively tonight. Here's Merson. And a rather unnecessary challenge by Joe Chin on Beresford. Southgate. Ball over the top, but Carboni is offside. And uh, in the meantime, Mr. Wilkie's having a word with. Joe Chim about that challenge on the Middlesbrough goalkeeper. Joe Chim in possession again. Now Stowe. This is Barry. Looking to use the pace again of Julian Joe up against Festa. And that looks suspiciously like a foul, but he's got away with it. The Fester's not happy because he thinks uh, Joe Chim took a dive without any real uh, physical contact from Fester, but I thought he defended the situation quite well, actually. Got his body goal side, didn't give Joe Chim the chance to use that pace and get behind him. Uh, in any doubt there all the uh, Middlesbrough fans let him know that was handball by Paul Merson but the game's become scrappy Alan hasn't it there's been a spell where both teams have given up possession cheaply but really it's because Borough again for me have got no one at the front who can really hold the ball up for them and for the umpteenth time that Carboni came and took it off the toes of a Middlesbrough player from their move up the league, of course. Uh, Aston Villa involved in an FA Cup quarter-final at the weekend, and that's one of several top live games you can see on Sky Sports this week. Beginning on Friday night with our first division nationwide action. Terrific match in prospect there. Huddersfield against Manchester City. And then a game that needs no build-up. Leeds United against Manchester United in the Premiership. Remember, that kicks off at 11.30 in the morning. Later that afternoon, that FA Cup quarter-final, Everton against Villa. Here's Fleming. Just too far in front of Jorninho. It's been that kind of night for Middlesbrough. Just too far. Absolutely. That really sums up Middlesbrough's first half performance. When, uh, when passes needed to be slick, when they needed to be to feet, they've just been that half a yard, the wrong side, and moves have broken down. This is the first of three successive home games for Middlesbrough, incidentally. They play... Coventry and then Leeds United on the next two Saturdays, so 
clearly they were looking at that little trio of matches to uh, re-establish themselves a little further up the league table. It's not started well, though. I really don't, don't believe that you can look any further ahead than the actual game that's facing you, that's in front of you, especially in the situation that Middlesbrough in. Good vision there from Stone to pick out right. Watang takes over, Delaney again, always in space it seems on that right-hand side. And across too high, too far as well for Julian Jochin. I think the, the wider that Delaney stays, the, the more and more of the ball he will receive because there are acres of space down the right-hand flank on Middlesbrough's left-hand side of their defence. Colin Cooper started out as a left back uh, in his early days at Middlesbrough. This is his second spell with the club, of course, but uh, it's not a position that's been familiar to him of recent times. Well, the thing is, Alan, it's not a formation that uh, Middlesbrough have adopted for, for a long, long time. So, again, maybe it's forced upon Brian Robson because of the absentees, players not available. But, uh, they certainly look lopsided at the moment this evening. And you have to say that without playing particularly well themselves, Aston Villa are comfortably in control at the moment. They're really playing as well as they need to play. Cooper in a bit of trouble. Joe Chim in possession. Now Stone. Gets it back from Merson. And the final ball breaks down. Now can Ince get Middlesbrough going. Certainly Juninho has promised to several times. This is Curtis Fleming. Alistair. And the pressure from Joe Chim. to say what they like, but they're not really helping at the moment. They're making those back players more anxious and they're looking for the easy ball rather than the uh, more ambitious one, perhaps. Here's Ince. And wouldn't you just believe it? Juninho seems to injure his own player then. Ince still in a bit of pain and now another bad injury. Well, there's a nasty collision there from Paul Gascoigne and Boateng. I think Ince got injured there by Juninho in the challenge just a couple of uh, moments before that. Well, it did get so congested in there, Alan. There was a number of bodies. Oh. Well, no wonder Gascoigne hurt his arm there, shall we say, diplomatically. Quite sure how Ince got injured there, but uh, injured he certainly is. There's absolutely no doubt that the referee didn't see that because had he had done, I think Paul Gascoigne would have been in trouble. It was on the blind side, and referee Alan Wilk is standing on the opposite side as Boateng has gone for the ball. He looks to have taken a nasty whack right across the face. Gotta say, Gazza's arms were very high. You see Boateng just one intention, his eyes on the ball. Gaza stepping across him and could easily have maybe broke a wrist there. Well, you have to say, if one player's got a head injury and the other an arm injury, there's only one way it could have occurred, and that wasn't nice to see, I'm afraid, from Paul Gascoigne. And I don't wish injury on anyone, but the way he went in there, he was asking for trouble one way or another. I don't think Gaz is going to take any further part in this game. I think you might be right. And there's a huge irony to this particular injury in the long, long catalogue of problems that Paul Gascoigne has had, because that was quite literally self-inflicted. And he could have done Boateng even worse damage. Gaza is distressed, but uh, as you rightly say, Alan, we've seen similar incidents in this man's career before certainly doesn't look good for him 
and he looks pretty dazed after that collision with Paul Gascoigne. Just when Brian Robson thought it couldn't get any worse, it has. Paul Gascoigne back in the side, having missed over two months, is surely not going to play any further part in this game, and judging by the looks of him at the moment, it's always folly to try and guess the extent of injury problems, I realise, but uh, he may not be available for a while yet. Alan, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Paul Gascoigne has, as you have to rightly say, self-inflicted and possibly a, some form of break on that left arm. And Bob Ward, the physio, certainly applying some kind of uh, splint there, which does suggest it might, might be a break. Well, it was always a gamble playing Paul Gascoigne in the first place tonight with his uh, lack of matches and his problems he's had a back injury he's uh, had a, a cartilage operation he's had a virus uh, he clearly isn't properly fit anyway because he just hasn't played that many games uh, only 10 of the previous 29 matches this season he got that twisted ankle early on didn't he and now an injury that is surely going to rule him out and maybe for some time I just wonder what Brian Robson must be thinking now Gaza went to ground early on, twisted an ankle, and he must have thought, you know, how long will he last? He knows uh, how precarious Gaza's fitness has been. He's seen it all in his career, hasn't he? Well, I suspect whatever happens in the rest of this match tonight, this is the picture and this is the story that will make the headlines tomorrow. Yet another return for Paul Gascoigne has ended in tears. And the way in which he was injured, I'm afraid, well, I wouldn't go as far as to say you can't have any sympathy, but really it was a bit of an unpleasant challenge. Well, you've got to say that Gaza's arm was certainly high and it made contact probably across the forehead of Boateng. And that's the reason that maybe Gaza has snapped a bone in that left arm, left wrist. Well, we all remember, of course, the most serious injury of the many that Paul Gascoigne has had in his career was also self-inflicted in that FA Cup final playing for Tottenham against Nottingham Forest. Sometimes his sheer enthusiasm and will to win gets the better of his uh, common sense, if you like, and maybe that was another example of that. I hate to be unsympathetic, but I think that was the case then. It's sad to see Gaza injured in that manner. Phil Stamp on in his place, and uh, you won't be surprised to believe that he's also been out injured of late. He's missed the previous four games with a groin problem. He had been a regular in the side before that, though, Phil Stamp. And uh, he had a little competitive bite there in midfield. We'll have a lot of stoppage time now. Understand, in fact, Mr. Wilkie has indicated to the fourth official that there will be seven minutes added. So just switch the kettle off for a moment. I think that's something of a record, isn't it? Seven minutes stoppage time. Touched on by Stone to Carboni, forward to Joe Chin. Leicester a little stronger this time. Ellisford's clearance though straight to the goal scorer Carboni. And those were looking in some disarray and hardly surprisingly at the moment. It's been a very sad 45 minutes for that. Paul Merson. Dispossessed by Flemming. Ince comes out with the ball. The substitute, Bill Stamp, gets his first touch, and it's not a bad ball either. Campbell needs a bit of help here. And he finally gets it in the form of a push in the back and a free kick. Now by Southgate. Well, he certainly didn't have any support. He had to hold it up. And in the end, he drew the foul from Southgate. He was just a little bit over-enthusiastic to actually pinch the ball from him when it wasn't necessary. Free kick. 
try again. Gininho. Ince couldn't get the return ball in quickly enough. And again, Middlesbrough, their own worst enemies, have given it back to Villa. Carboni, Joe Chin, Cooper across on the cover. He's held it up well, Joe Chin. What's he going to do now, though? Oh, Joe Chin, Carboni, both quick, both lively, both the great awareness of where to run, and they're causing Borough all kinds of problems. If you're tuning in, wondering why we're not uh, doing our half-time assessment of the first half action, obviously the first half hasn't finished because Paul Gascoigne went off with a looked, uh, what looked like a serious arm injury after a collision with Villas Boateng, and we are in seven minutes of first half stoppage time. Well, in what's been a miserable season for Middlesbrough, Clive, this is a half they most certainly want to forget. Well, this is a half that they, they didn't want to see here at the Riverside, and, and certainly Brian Robson has a big job on his hands at half-time, probably thinking now, how can I change it? I need something different, I need a spark from somewhere to try to get us back into this game, to get something out of the game, to improve our performance. there for Gareth Southgate. And I gather the uh, Middlesbrough club doctor is still in, trying to uh, assess the extent of the damage to Paul Gascoigne's arm. And Jim Walker, the Villa, physio, trying to extend, uh, guess the extent of the damage to Gareth Southgate's mouth there from that challenge by O'Neill. Yes, O'Neill's right arm going across Gareth Southgate's face and looks to have... Uh, Cut the upper lip. Although it's not been a nasty game, has it, Alan? Not in the main, no, but uh, obviously that one challenge will be talked about at great length, I'm sure. Gascoigne on Boateng. Which had uh, a painful and ironic outcome. He's still feeling the effects of it, isn't he, George Boateng? Not surprisingly. The big question has to be why? Why does Paul Gascoigne have to do those things? Yeah, I must say, he's a lad I've known from uh, his Newcastle days when he first broke into the team. As many people have said before, he's a very likeable character, but he does have that red mist that descends so often. And it did in that moment, and he came off worse. I understand an ambulance has been called to take Paul Gasco into hospital. Here's Ince. Middlesbrough have got to forget about that and get on with rescuing this game. And I have to say, up to now, there hasn't been the slightest hint that they'll do that. No, Brian Wilson had to throw Keith O'Neill up front with Campbell. But uh, 51 minutes played in this first half, and without a doubt, well, the, ball, the ball's in the villa net, and even that hasn't amused Brian Robson, and not surprising. Uh, well, that's it. The referee's seen enough of the first half, an unusual first half in many ways. A couple of major talking points, just the one goal to Aston Villa, scored by Benito Carboni. It's Middlesbrough nil, Villa 1. Unusual finish to the half as well, but it has ended. Uh, Middlesbrough nil, Aston Villa 1. We'll get Andy's thoughts when we come back. On Villa's lead, given to them by Benito Carboni. And, of course, it will also be a half remembered for the injury to Paul Gascoigne. Oh. We'll be back in a moment or so.
March on Sky Sports. Spring is on its way. Fantastic. Rangers Celtic united in an embattled history. Nail biting. The new season of Super League springs into action. Great atmosphere. England Wales in a Six Nations grudge match. Yes. For Scotland, the testing springboard when they play world champions France. Glorious. With a spring in their swing, the world's best vie for the Players' Championship. Sensational. Seeing red, Manchester United Liverpool, fueled by a remorseless will to win. And on Sky Digital 24 Hour Sports News and Sky Sports Extra's interactive service. Spring is in the air. March on Sky Sports. Footballing action coming up. Huddersfield play Manchester City Friday night, 7 o'clock start. It's interactive on Sky Sports Extra and available on Sky Sports 2. Sunday, from the Carling Premiership, Leeds play Manchester United. 11 o'clock start on one. And again, it's interactive on Sky Sports Extra. 1-0 Villa. Well, there has not been an abundance of attempts at goal, has there? Just the one on target, and Carboni scored with it. Depressing 45 minutes for Middlesbrough, and we should remind ourselves that Paul Gascoigne has been stretched off. It looked like a broken arm. We're waiting for confirmation. What do you do at this juncture, Andy, if you are Brian Robson? Uh, it's difficult, Richard. Seven first-team players out. The team have not performed from the first minute, and you've made a, an amazing error in conceding your first goal. The one thing you try to do when you're really struggling for results and looking to turn the corner is try and eliminate individual errors. And that means if you're a defender, then you defend. I talked yesterday about Onshow and Hupia at Liverpool. One of the things I liked about them, two old-fashioned centre-halves, if it needed heading, it was headed. If it needed clearing, it was cleared. Centre-backs defend, and then if you get anything extra for them, that's great. Was he guilty of trying to overplay, or was, was there a little bit of lack of confidence in his mind? I, I mean, what was going on? Guilty and convicted of trying to overplay, Richard. It's as simple as that. The case was closed. I don't know what was in his mind. We take a look at the ball played up. There's no real problem. They've got the 2v2 at the back. The two big lads are there. There isn't a problem. But as this ball comes over Cab on his head, you would be begging Villa to play balls up all night like that. You would be trying to force Villa to play it from back to front, through the air, like that, and he said, Pallister and Fester just to go, bosh, I'll head it straight back. But what on earth is in his mind to go up that high and think that he can pull it down on his chest? Then there are all sorts of problems, because then Gary Pallister decides, well, I'm going to go run out and try and play him offside here, and gives the defender around here, Colin Cooper, absolutely no chance, because the ball breaks, you see Gary try and get offside, Colin Cooper can't get back. It's a great finish from Benito Carboni, but... Just a catalogue of errors at the mm. back. All the way back, we remember, to the cup final. Spurs against Nottingham mm -hmm. Forest, and Gazza injured himself then. Uh, he doesn't learn, does he? I mean, I've always said, and everyone said it, and Alan said it, he's a lovely lad, and people like him, and it's, it's, a, it's a true fact. But one can never understand what goes through Paul's mind when he does things like this. I have absolutely no defence for it, Richard. George Boateng, look at him, fixed, totally on the ball. Paul, only on Boateng. The wrist looks smashed to me. He goes for it right away. Self-inflicted. He's lucky the referee didn't see it. He would have been walking... Oh, well, and yeah. Boateng's lucky. He's not seriously injured there George as well. George is very fortunate that it hit him on the forehead, Richard, and not between the eyes. If it hit him on the bridge of the nose, he might have had a broken nose. Well, lower down, the way his foot was going in too. Let's get some uh, information on that from George Gavin. George. That's confirmed now, Richard. The Middlesbrough doctors examined Paul Gascoigne, and it's a broken forearm. They're going to take him to Middlesbrough Hospital in an ambulance very shortly. The referee, Alan Wilkie, was concerned as well. He said he didn't see a thing, but Villa players told him what had happened. And he said the Villa players accept the fact that he didn't see it at all. But a broken arm for Paul Gascoigne, and he's off to hospital. And what a shame when you think about all the good things that he's capable of, he will be remembered as the footballer that cried. Paul Gascoigne. Action from the Football League, the Premiership, the FA Cup on Sunday, Sky Sports 2 and interactive on Sky Sports Extra, 3.30 start. It's Everton against Aston Villa for a place in the semi-finals. And later, 5.30 on Sky Sports 1 from the Scottish Cup, it's Inverness against Aberdeen, who of course this week came off the bottom of the Scottish Premier and got themselves a place in the League Cup final in Scotland. Referee said he didn't see the incident involving Paul Gascoigne and uh, George Burting. Andy? Yeah, I think his view was blocked, Richard. Lovely shot of it here. You see Alan Wilkie here looking at, I think, a lot of players. And as Paul's going to come in from here, and just, I think he only sees the backer 
George Boateng, that's a real difficult one for the referee to see, to make a judgment on. Three players go very close together. I think he was right. I think it would have been a very, very hard call for the referee to have seen what actually happened. Only one uh, shot on target in the opening 45. 25 own goals this season. Might we have had a 26th? We might have had. Look at this. This is the, the best piece of movement from Middlesbrough as he flashes that across the goal. Now, does Gareth Barry judge that perfectly or does he get a little bit lucky? It's so almost as if he tries to pull his foot away at the end and the spin on the ball <laughs> takes it just wide. Well, George Bertain is back, as you can see, and uh, Sky Digital viewers on Sky Sports Extra who wish to enjoy player cam during the year. second half. The first 15 minutes will be following Benito Carboni. Right, let's rejoin Clive Allen and Arne Parry. Thank you, Richard. A very critical 45 minutes ahead for Middlesbrough. Only one win in their last 10 Premiership matches. Incidentally, in the next few weeks, they face Leeds, Arsenal and Manchester United here at the Riverside Stadium. They could get worse before it gets better for them. 1-0 down. Their squad ravaged by injuries, suspensions and international call-ups. Gascoigne stretched off with what we now can confirm was a broken arm. How on earth can Middlesbrough dig themselves out of this particular hole? Well, Brian Robson was always a fighter in his career. He will demand that at least in the second half here from his players, but there's been a noticeably uh, difficult atmosphere around the Riverside tonight, almost as though the fans were expecting the worst, and uh, these are really hard times for Robbo. There's absolutely no doubt other that they need courage and conviction now in a period when confidence is absolutely rock bottom. And they started the second half by conceding a corner to the villain-in-chief, Paul Mercer. That's as far as the Middlesbrough fans are concerned, of course. And it goes towards Ehiogne, the penalty spot. Beyond him was Southgate. The referee saw an infringement, however, free kick to Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough have had problems scoring this season, only 25 and 23 league games. In fact, only the bottom three clubs have scored fewer. And also, they've only managed one clean sheet in their last 11 league and cup games. It's a pretty dismal record. Tumbling towards the bottom places in the table. And as I mentioned, with some very difficult fixtures ahead. No wonder Juninho and his teammates are getting increasingly frustrated. I think the worrying thing for Brian Robson and all the supporters as well, and they will look back on what happened when they were relegated a few seasons ago. And they had a good start to that season, but fell away badly and dropped like a stone, as they are at the present time. The strength of Brian Robson's position, I think, is that he enjoys arguably the best uh, relationship with his chairman, Steve Gibson, than of any manager in the Premiership. Here's Joe Chip, right, skipped inside the challenge from Fleming, and then the second one from Ince. Delaney, Carboni in space here, and he can hit the ball from that range, which he does a little better than that, but there's still a problem here, and Joe Chin was lining up the shot as the challenge came in from Somerville. Right with the cross, stamps clearance, hooked away then by Fester, Middlesbrough under pressure again. They're under pressure, Alan, and then the alarm bells are ringing because Villa have really controlled possession right from the beginning of this second half. Middlesbrough can't get out of their own defensive third at the moment. And you feel the second Villa goal would finish the home team off here. Firmino forced towards his own goal. Cooper with a good ball out. O'Neill. who won the ball, keeps thundering forward here. Thought he was fouled, the referee doesn't agree. But White wins it back and just as quickly loses it. A 
offside here. I think they'd be just happy for a, a respite because of that early pressure from Villa. Neil beaten to it this time by Southgate. And David James has had a very comfortable evening so far in the Villa goal. Villa are unbeaten in their last four away matches in the Premiership and they haven't lost on their travels since uh, they went down 2-1 at Coventry back in November. Very impressive record, they've resurrected their season in excellent style. A couple of tasty challenges going in now. And still no whistle. And Juninho comes out with the ball and finds O'Neill. But the challenge by Delaney just enough. From the corner. Got the crowd going. Well, it's lifted the crowd, and Mark Delaney can't quite believe it because I think he plays it off of Keith O'Neill. Janino wriggled the ball through to the defence. Delaney clears, and as we see, comes off O'Neill's foot. Maybe the turning point the Villa need. A little bit of good fortune for Borough. O'Neill himself on the near post here. It goes into that direction. James lost it in the crowd of players. Middlesbrough are getting up some kind of a, a head of steam here. O'Neill for that. And again. And he wins another corner. This is exactly what Middlesbrough wanted. Harry Pallister has come forward to the near post this time. And he's still there over his head and over everyone else's and the referee saw a foul in there, free kick Villa. Well, if you're only just joining us, the sad news from Middlesbrough's point of view is that Paul Gascoigne has broken his arm in a very debatable challenge, I'm afraid to say, against Villa's George Boateng and these pictures show you the uh, Middlesbrough and former England player being taken off in an ambulance to a local hospital for treatment to that broken arm. It's going to keep him out for, well, the remainder of the season, I guess, Clive. Yes, I think uh, there's been doubts over Paul Gascoigne's fitness playing tonight when obviously not 100% fit. And uh, another layoff which certainly will, I feel, curtail his, uh, his season. A bit of hesitation this time by uh, Villa's players. And that enables Stamp to come forward for Middlesbrough. A lovely little touch there by Janinho, but uh, Ediog's not exactly slow, is he? Alistair wins the header back. At least there's a bit more determination and uh, spirit about Middlesbrough in this second half. Well, they've upped the tempo, haven't they? They've upped the tempo of their game, Alan. Although still, there's too many passes going astray, too many moves breaking down. That is purely a lack of confidence from Middlesbrough's point of view. Well, it's easy, I guess, uh, because of the nature of their problems, to talk about the game from a Middlesbrough angle. But let's praise Aston Villa for the part they played tonight. Very steady, very confident performance, very polished from them. They certainly deserve their lead. Here's right. Decent tackle as well. Well, oh, that was fantastic coverage from Boateng. Juninho back in possession. And it's uh, Boateng who denied him. Fleming. Good interception by Merson of all people on the edge of his own box. 
Harboni flicks it on, and it's a great ball, too, to Jochia. He's on his own, he's got to keep going. Well, this is a glorious opportunity. It's flicked on by Carboni. He gets a little touch in front of Pallister, and then Jochin gets one on one with Ince. And there's only one intention in his mind, and that's to attack Paul Ince. He just wanted a back off. And a poor finish from Jochin when really he would be expected to hit the target. Ince plays it long. David James shows he could be a decent centre half. before that uh, this is the start of three successive home games for Villa it's also the start of three successive away matches for Aston Villa they've got Everton in the FA Cup quarter-final Bradford uh, in the league after this one Good header of the ball. Very good covering by Gareth Southgate. Now Alan Wright. It's a lovely little ball. Carboni. And it's a bit careless from the Italian. But he's got it back again. How many times has he done that tonight? Now, decision for Mr. Wilkie to make. Fester certainly hauled him back. It's going to be a card of some kind. I don't think you could argue he was the last man, so I presume it'll be yellow. Carboni gave the ball away and then, to his credit, hurried Festa quickly. Again, a little bit sloppy, a little bit slow from Festa. Absolutely no doubt that uh, Alan Wilkie had to take his name. And that means, of course, a suspension for Festa now, his fifth looking of the season. There's some free kick played in to the far post, but uh, a little bit too much height on it, even for a big lad like Hugo Ehyog. And they tried to isolate Hugo at the back post, but Pallister's pulled away. And uh, really, Mercy's just disappointed, I think, with the quality of the ball. Didn't even give him a chance to attack it at that far post. Another towering header there, and another offside decision goes against Middlesbrough. So Neil's flick on again to Campbell. subdued it once again Alan. the early signs of a revival at the beginning of the second half seem to be waning Watang Delaney Jochen wanted it early he's delayed but now gives it away oh lovely skill by O'Neill he's done well tonight in an unfamiliar position lovely ball too from uh, Juninho to Stamp who's done well himself but couldn't get enough height on the cross. Outside decision against Joe Jim. Some of Fleming. Crowd urging him on, but he hasn't got an option. He has now. And it's all a bit untidy. And Barry clears quite comfortably. Carboni. Hustled out a bit this time in midfield. Now Pallister.
Harry again gets it clear under pressure. Watang. Now Stone. They're right at Bozola. Good challenge there from O'Neill, and indeed the throw has gone uh, Middlesbrough's way. Building quickly towards Janinho, the little Brazilian loses out this time. Carboni with a deft layoff, but he will have a telegraph that, turning determined to win it. This is what the home fans wanted, some more uh, determination. They didn't want that, though, for the umpteen time, Andy Campbell offside. Well, again, it's a straight ball down the middle, and uh, Villa have been quite comfortable in dealing with those all evening. The three central defenders of Villa in an excellent line once again. Campbell strain just that half a yard offside. Watching on Sky Sports Extra, our player cam for the next quarter of an hour will follow the Brazilian Juninho. An hour of the game completed here, and Middlesbrough, who started the evening just four points above the relegation places, are in trouble against Aston Villa. A goal behind. Villa looking to move four places up the Premiership to seventh if they collect all three points tonight. by right and Gregory down on the bench now presumably to uh, organize a substitution there by the looks of it Lee Henry ready to come on well, that's an obvious foul and it's been given didn't think so, but from where we're sitting, there was only one decision. Well, Hugo Hegel has the run on O'Neill, gets his body between the player and the ball, good defending, and O'Neill has to haul him to the ground, absolutely. No other choice for referee Alan Wilkie than to give the free kick. substitution I guess and as I mentioned before the match I'm sure Brian Robson must have envied uh, John Gregory when he looked at uh, not only his team but his substitutes bench he had Lee Hendry who's been a regular of course for the season and Ian Taylor on the bench there the boos are for the departure of Paul Merson he sensibly happy, keeps his thoughts to himself but as he's far not as very the fans happy. are concerned but uh, yeah in that respect he wasn't happy at being substituted his gestures were not towards the fans who were booing him, but I think rather towards his own manager there, for taking him off. I feel sure he wanted to stay on and continue to prove a point, so to speak, but uh, he's back alongside his manager, and Lee Henry in the action. Straight away. Alistair's clearance. Barry wins it back. Southgate. It's a bit short for Delaney, and it really invited the interception by Cooper. Forward for O'Neill, who's got in behind that heel this time. David James to Villa's rescue. Well, it was an excellent decision from David James. As Cooper breaks, slides the ball in behind that heel. O'Neill looks as if he probably would have got onto the loose ball had it not been for the intervention of David James. I don't think 
there's any doubt that Villa deserve to be in the lead here, but what must be causing them anxiety at the moment is their inability to kill Middlesbrough off, and now they've conceded a corner. Well, there's definitely a little bit more urgency about Middlesbrough. They're closing down quicker. They're not allowing Villa to control possession for long periods. They have forced a number of corners down on this left-hand side. And I think they should put one into the mixer, really, for the big boys. Again, they've gone to the near post and it's broke down. Jochen, chance of a counter-attack here, which could punish Middlesbrough. Carboni's in yards of space. Watting beyond him. The Italian won't give this one up, though. And that's why. Takes a deflection, Alan, the shot. We talked of Middlesbrough's pressure. Corner. Far left-hand corner of the field. The corner comes in. Bad corner to the near post. The classic counter-attack. Villa break down the right, Carboni in acres of space, chasing onto it, racing Boateng, and I think it just takes a deflection there, and just about sums up Middlesbrough's luck this evening. Look at the space, he has time. Here comes a deflection which just inadvertently takes it over the despairing dive of Beresford. Carboni scores two. And really, Middlesbrough in a desperate situation now. Well, you shouldn't really uh, end up conceding a goal from your own corner, but it's surprising how often that does happen in football. David James at the other end has taken another risk leaving his penalty area. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Festa. Long ball for Campbell. Well, if it wasn't uh, hard enough for Middlesbrough before, it certainly is now. As we were saying, really, you always felt that a second goal club was going to kill them off, and it's hard to argue with that. It is just quite amazing, though, Alan, the situation that they were in. They did have this the corner down on this left-hand side. They tried on three occasions knocking it into that near post. Each one of those fouled. They did have the presence of Festa and Pallister in the middle, but they opted for that near post corner again. Classic counter attack, 2 0 down. Marboni's second goal, having not scored at all in 12 previous Premiership matches for Villa, he's now got two in one game. That second with the aid of a deflection off Middlesbrough's Mark Somerville. So he's on a hat trick was of course and completed it successfully against Leeds United in the FA Cup I no wonder he's looking a happy bunny at the moment well he's playing for his long-term future and with the way he's putting goals away at the moment certainly I think John Gregory will be hoping to tie him down on the long-term deal well, the danger is for Middlesbrough now, having seen their uh, glimmer of a hope of getting back into this game, probably disappear, that they could fall apart here. Joachim has been hauled back, and the referee has seen it the other way. There you go. Well, I don't think anyone in the game doubted that Middlesbrough had appointed a good manager when Brian Robson came here. It's been a real roller coaster ride with promotions and relegations and cup finals at the moment. They're on the downward slope for sure. And they're on the back foot again here. He's right in Villa on the attack again. Carboni in possession. You've got to feel sympathy for Middlesbrough. But some of their players just don't want the ball out there at the moment. The crowd are getting on their backs. Understandably, you've got to say, it's a sad night this for Borough. Joe Jim caught offside. Well, what can I say? That would further add to the glumness that they're feeling. That's just to repeat the scoreline. 
Steve Gibson, who is Middlesbrough through and through, will be feeling this as badly as any supporter. And even Juninho can't give them a glimmer of hope. Ordering the chips for the journey home, or still not happy about some uh, tactical switch out there, perhaps? Of course, they don't have chips anymore on the coach home club. Oh, no, Alan, that's right. now, isn't it? Carbohydrates. Stone looking for Joachim in the middle. Pulls it back and gets it back. And almost scores, but he didn't need to because Julian Joachim was on hand to complete Middlesbrough's misery, or is it complete? Boos echo around the Riverside Stadium. Julian Joachim gets his first Premiership goal for five months, Villa 3-0 in the lead. Well, absolute despair here. Stone cuts the ball back, a little bit of good fortune, a ricochet, and when it's parried by the keeper, Julian Joachim won't have an easier opportunity of scoring. And really, that sums up Middlesbrough's evening compounds the misery quite emphatic victory for Aston Villa and all around this beautiful stadium now the sight of Middlesbrough fans leaving their seats heading for the exits and well I don't like to uh, kick a club when it's down so to speak but with two cup exits against Nationwide teams one from division two the other from division one and with a plummeting league form and some very difficult matches coming up this is a bleak bleak time for Middlesbrough football club well alarm bells are ringing Alan it's as simple as that to Brian Robson's great credit he hasn't made excuses about all the injuries he's had it would have been easy to do so. Some managers certainly do opt for that route, but uh, he's gone on with it. But tonight, it's been a barrier too many. And not only that, he's lost Paul Gascoigne with a broken arm. Can it get any worse tonight at the Riverside? Carboni looking for his hat-trick. It's a lovely ball, and Joe Chim's onside here. Good work by Beresford. And then sheer frustration, I think, in that challenge by Cooper and a yellow card for him. And Delaney attacking the ball down the right. Cooper is, as we clearly see there, late. Sees a yellow card and again just compounds the misery that the borough players, supporters, manager and staff are feeling at this particular time. And have just made a change. Keith has been replaced by Alan Armstrong, who started only half a dozen games this season. He's another who's had a succession of injuries. And uh, Villa are also going to make a change. Ian Taylor has had an ankle problem and has made only one substitute appearance in the last three games. He's coming on for George Watson. Big smile from him, but he could have lost a, a tooth or two in that first half collision with Paul Gascoigne. Ian Taylor immediately goes forward with nine goals to his name this season. Why not? right Armstrong gets his first touch Southgate breathing down his neck literally It's a bit like watching a wounded animal at the moment, uh, Clive. It's not nice to see this evening for Middlesbrough, is it? No, 17 minutes left on the clock, Alan. You're 3-0 down at home. Dreadful run of form. Absolutely rock-bottom confidence-wise. 
where do you go from here? Well, let's repeat again from Aston Villa's point of view. This has been a very professional performance indeed, very impressive. Looks like they're on their way to uh, extending their excellent run. Remember, only one defeat in 13 matches before tonight. Four wins, three draws in their previous seven Premiership fixtures. They're going to go up to seventh in the table. It's all going in the right direction for John Gregory and Aston Villa at the moment, and this will give them huge confidence for Sunday's FA Cup quarter-final date at Goodison against Everton. A game, incidentally, you can see live on Sky Sports. Right, time to turn your thoughts to tonight's man of the match, 09009 11 22 33, the number to call. There's Lee Hendry. It's a good ball for Wright. Joachim well placed in the middle. Oh, that's a lovely goal. Well, I, mean, I think the thing is, when you look at the move that Villa constructs, it's almost too easy. Absolutely no pressure on the ball. Build it up down the left. Acres of room. Time to pick out Jochim. Totally unmarked. And really, that is far, far too easy. Conceding premiership goals. Look at the space that he has to pick out Jochim. And this really is becoming a rout. And Villa on course now for their biggest ever away win in the Premiership. Well, I said before there was every danger that Middlesbrough could fall apart, and that they have done spectacularly. Middlesbrough nil, Aston Villa four. Neil Madison came on in the aftermath of that goal for Curtis Fleming. I wouldn't like to <laughs> be in Neil Madison's shoes now. Going on, 4-0 down, 15 minutes to go. Incidentally, uh, just cleaning up the substitution there, Madison on for Fleming. I can tell Sky Digital viewers watching on Sky Sports Extra that we have now uh, moved our player cam to Villa's Gareth Southgate. Well, as a contest, this is over now, and I suppose some difficult questions are going to be asked in the aftermath of this game about where Middlesbrough go from here, what Brian Robson's future is. There's always speculation when teams are having a difficult time about uh, the manager's position, of course. Often that's very unfair. In his case, he will point to all the injuries, suspensions and so on. But there's no doubt now that uh, there are difficult times ahead for Middlesbrough. Well, it certainly will hurt Brian Robson as much as it hurts every one of these Borough supporters. He's always been a winner in his career. He won't like the situation that his club's in, but certainly they've got to try to keep their head above water, Alan, as they slide towards that relegation zone. Carboni lines up another shot, and that was close. Well, the front two for Villa, both on hat-tricks, Carboni and Joachim. Really poor pressure on the ball and was always going to give Carboni the opportunity to have a strike. And having scored two, he was going to have a pop to try and make it another hat-trick. Now the chairman here, Steve Gibson, is a great believer in the abilities of Brian Robson. And why not? Because he has delivered some fantastic times to this football club. And uh, I would think if anyone's going to keep his nerve and be patient, it will be Steve Gibson. And I hope he does, because Brian Robson has already proved his worth. As I say, everyone here is going to feel the pressure after this humiliation, and that's not too strong a word. Acres of space for Villa. And uh, Jochen, Mike Carboni on a hat-trick now. It's been far too easy for Aston Villa, that's the bottom line. Scored uh, four goals here in, I think it was 
Yeah, yeah, last home game. home game, yeah. That's right. So, uh, wow. Well, how many more nails can we knock in the coffin? It's, uh, it's almost too painful to recount. about Villa, the form they were in. Carboni coming off the back of an FA Cup hat-trick. Scored two more tonight alongside his striking partner, Julian Jochim. Defensively, they've looked very, very solid, very sound. They've battled away in midfield. It really has been a comprehensive away performance from Villa. It will fire them into seventh place, but I think, more importantly, it will fire them in with a shout of European football come the end of this season. So only that's John Gregory's target. And there we are. They say that statistics can lie, but not tonight. Not a single shot on target. The Middlesbrough, Aston Villa have had four. They've all gone in. Efficiency or what? And the ground is half empty now. Normally it's a nightmare getting away from the riverside. It'll be pretty easy tonight. <laughs> of course, what makes things even worse is the fact that both Sunderland and Newcastle relatively are doing pretty well at the moment. David James has got an injury incidentally here. That's why we've had a delay. But uh, Newcastle having beaten Manchester United at the weekend and moving up the table. Some of them are going the opposite way, but have still had a wonderful season so far. And that all adds to the pressure for Middlesbrough. I think certainly Villa's attentions are now turned to the FA Cup tyre that faces them at the weekend. And I don't think that uh, John Gregory will take any chances with David James. And young Neil Cutler, the reserve keeper will probably be brought into action as we see David James striking that goal kick. Probably just pulling the thigh muscle there. Physio, he, he won't want to leave the field to play, but the physio, I think, will uh, insist that he comes off. And Steve Harrison just taking the instructions there. I wouldn't like John Gregory's mobile phone bill at the end of this season. I think it's Mr. Ellis that picks that up, I and mean, that's why he's not worried. <laughs> he keeps getting results like this, he won't be worried about playing at yeah, Cobu either. Be right. Actually, I mean, it's a good lesson, if you like, for Middlesbrough, because there was a time when John Gregory was under every bit as much of pressure. We'll come back to that in a moment as Carboni goes uh, clear here, or might have done. But we all remember when uh, the newspapers and many fans were calling for Doug Ellis to get rid of John Gregory earlier this season. But Doug Ellis kept his nerve, and Villa spectacularly turned the corner, and look where they are now. We do feel, however, that Middlesbrough's problems might go a bit deeper than that, Carl. Well, I think the thing is with John Gregory at that particular time, he did have a few injury problems to key influential players. But when they returned, most notably for me, Ekiol coming back into the heart of that defence, they turn the corner and they've gone from strength to strength. Well, it's been an eminently forgettable night for Middlesbrough. It's a night to remember for this young man, Neil Cutler, who's been on the bench for the last 13 games for Aston Villa, finally gets on the field. The ex-England youth international who was signed from Chester in November. He's uh, a substitute because Peter Enkelman, who's the normal number two standing for David James, is out injured. So Neil Cutler has got seven minutes of his premiership debut. David James going off with a dead leg, we're told. Can't imagine there's a more perfect scenario for a goalkeeper making his debut. 
<laughs> he almost he almost made you eat those words that time. <laughs> a pretty nervous uh, bit of footwork early on from him anyway. But I, I take your point. <laughs> Four nil up, yes, quite comfortable. It should be. I was going to tempt fate by saying I wondered if he'd have anything to do, but he's brought into action almost immediately. Just want to hear that final whistle. Huddersfield against Manchester City is our nationwide Division One action for you from the McAlpine Stadium on Friday night. The programme begins at seven. And then on Sunday, what a match in prospect at Ellen Road. Leeds United against Manchester United. Our programme begins at 11 for an 11.30 a.m. kickoff. And then we move on for FA Cup quarter-final action to Goodison Park, Everton against Aston Villa. And here goes Julian Jochim. He's got Lee Henry up in support. But he's got thoughts of a hat-trick. Yes, with uh, clearance, has gone straight to Carboni. you will have loads of time to get behind the ball. get away from Cooper yeah. Middlesbrough inevitably looking ragged totally dispirited and totally fed up with themselves Did I? well it's almost like a training match five aside for them now I don't like to highlight the point Alan but I don't think I've ever been in a premiership game with which is so quiet, absolutely no atmosphere here whatsoever now. Now Jochim's well placed here, if they can pull the ball back to him, a bit too far. Corner though. Well, they haven't brought many fans tonight, but my word, have they had a good night. And uh, on their feet as they get this corner, Lee Henry gets it back. the last few minutes and I'm sure Mr Wilkie being a sensible referee will be uh, quite circumspect with the amount of time he adds on here good back then play there by Steve Stone to give Henry possession again so many empty seats in a stadium that uh, had a, an attendance of around 30,000 20 minutes or so ago. They have literally voted with their feet, the Middlesbrough fans tonight. They have a huge number of season ticket holders here, of course. And uh, quite grateful for that, I think, at the moment, because even in this uh, part of the world where fans are extremely loyal, their gates might have been affected. There's Joe Chip. Villa, quite rightly, quite professionally, taking no pity, come forward looking for a fifth. I think the only way you can sum it up, Alan, is a painful evening for the supporters, everybody connected with Middlesbrough Football Club, including Mr Paul Gascoy. A very, very painful evening. Yeah, in a way, you've got to have a bit of sympathy for Aston Villa because I'm sure all the headlines will be uh, about Middlesbrough's demise rather than Villa's wonderful rise up the table. The linesman saw something he didn't like there with that challenge. Yeah, it was a late challenge for Janino as Delaney's playing the ball up the line. It's late and it's high. A little bit of common sense from Alan Wilkie. Doesn't book Janino. I think a little bit of sympathy from him there, but as we see, 
That just about sums up everything that's happened here at Middlesbrough tonight. And you've got a feel for this guy. Into the final minute then at the Riverside Stadium. It's been a wonderful night for Aston Villa. A terrible night for Middlesbrough. And uh, let there be no question now, Middlesbrough are involved in the relegation fight. Deciding the foot was raised there as Cutler tried to make the clearance. Juninho, the guilty party. Well, and I must admit, I don't know why Neil Cutler took so long there because he could have easily just played the ball away, took one touch and knocked the ball upfield. Surely he's, he's running down the clock, I understand that, but he was just inviting trouble and it was frustration for Juninho in trying to block his clearance. Three minutes more agony if you're a Middlesbrough fan. Three minutes more to enjoy if you support Villa. Ince wins it back for the home team. Driving run by him, but the ball at the end of it disappointing. He felt he was caught as he played it. No free kick. Armstrong had to let that go by, otherwise he uh, obviously would have been offside. Well, I know when they went out of the FA Cup, and then in quick succession, the Worthington Cup against Wrexham and Tranmere, there was a lot of debate in the local newspapers and phone-ins on the local radio station about uh, exactly what Middlesbrough should do about the crisis. That died down a little, but things have not improved since then. Start up afresh tonight. There are some who can see the bright side of life still. And they're the supporters you need in situations like this, Alan. They're the ones who come in week in, week out when things are at rock bottom as they are at the moment for Borough. to see Alistair's given it away here Delaney knocks it into yards of space it seems and young Henry's in a great position here and gets it from Taylor Carboni far post will he go all the way on his own he did Carboni furious he's still thinking of the hat trick corner it's another quick, incisive counter-attack from Villa. Taylor sees Hendry in an advanced position, shows great composure here to turn back inside. Actually takes a deflection away for a Villa corner. Well, I must say, it's easy to understand those fans who've gone home early, but equally, you've got to praise the Middlesbrough fans who've stayed on here. There's a few boos, but by and large, they were sympathetic at the end. But Aston Villa have completed a tremendous... 4-0 victory here at the Riverside Stadium tonight. Two goals each from Carboni and Joe Chim. And, uh, well, Middlesbrough, where do they go from here, Richard? It's going to be a long season now for Middlesbrough, isn't it? Uh, still to come from us tonight, 10.30 this evening on Sky Sports 1, the Monday night sports centre, followed at a quarter to 11 by our football phoning. You're on Sky Sports, Alan McAnally with Rob McCaffrey tonight. Over on 2 at 11, there's the Football League review. Uh, on Sky Sports Extra at half past ten, more wrestling, uh, another WWF classic, and of course you can keep up to date with all the latest football news on our 24-hour news channel, Sky Sports News. The verdict when we come back on what turned out to be a Valentine's Day massacre of the Riverside.
Think he finds, pretended to be Shakespeare, fallen in love with Gwyneth Paltrow. Is it Ralph? Oh, sorry, they... No, the one that looks good in tights. Joe. Mm. So last night, there's Joe Fiennes declaring his love to me. By the time I get home, all the best films are finished. No, he's on 24 hours a day every 15 minutes on Skybox office. Joseph Fiennes making love every 15 minutes. How do they do that? It's digital or something. I bet it is. Shakespeare in Love, now showing every 15 minutes on Skybox office. I drift into a dream. A railway barrier as it falls. The glorious burst water main on the A406. A majestic spilt load. Snowbound. And Benito Carboni <laughs> is the man of the match. 81% of the votes tonight. And here he is with George Gavin. Benny, were you surprised how easily Aston Villa won that game? Yes, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good game for us. We win a very important game today. Uh, it's no easy win the game here in Middlesbrough against, against uh, I think, a good team. But we, are, we, we do a very good game today. I'm very happy because we uh, has got two goals. And uh, I hope we, we have a chance again for, for, for win the game. Why do you think Aston Villa are playing so well at the moment? Uh, now is a long time we play well. And now uh, we have a long period. We win uh, very important games. Uh, because we want to go in Europe. And uh, we have a chance to go to Europe because I think we are, we are a very good team. Did you see Paul Gascoigne's challenge on George Boateng? No, I think Paul, uh, Paul uh, played well today. But I think all, all teams are difficult. Because uh, Aston Villa play well, uh, so. What is your situation now, Benny? Will you be staying next season? Are you talking? Do other clubs from Italy want to sign you? No, that is not true. Uh, for sure, many clubs uh, know I'm a, I'm a free, I'm a free end of the season. But uh, the manager talked with my agent about the new contract, so I'm up. Uh, I stay in Villa. So there's a good chance you'll be here next year. Yeah, I, I, hope, I hope so. I hope so. A big game coming up now in the FA Cup for you, isn't it? <laughs> I guess Everton. I, I guess Everton. We, I scored two goals last season uh, with Sheffield, so I hope it's a lucky team for me again. OK, Benny, you're the calling man of the match. Well played. Thank well you. done. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Colin, how miserable an experience was that? I don't think words can describe it, to be honest with you. I um, don't know what to say. Right up to our next. Right up to our next. I take goals at home in the last two games. Is it a side that's obviously lacking confidence? Is that what makes it hard for you out there? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, you know, we, we go into the game full of optimism, give a goal away in ten minutes by our own mistakes, and, you know, things have just, you know, we've got nothing up, you know, we're not creating much up front at the moment, and it's, uh, you know, it's going badly at both ends. Um, we've got another big home game in Coventry on Saturday, so we've got to pick ourselves up and pick ourselves up doubly quickly. The manager in his programme notes said that relegation is a reality. How aware are the players of that? You've got to be aware. You're fifth bottom or whatever. You're leaking goals. You're not scoring goals. And, um, you know, we haven't won this year. That's, you know, that speaks its own problems and, its, and volumes for us at the moment. OK, well, thanks for stopping. Good luck, Colin. Yeah, brave man for stopping, but anything to add to that? He rather succinctly summed it all up, didn't he? I think he did, Richard. I think he's got massive problems. I, I, I look back at that game from start to finish and I can find very, very little um, to offer them words of comfort mm. for Middlesbrough fans. Uh, there's nothing that I saw tonight that's going to make it easy um, for them to get out of the terrible slump they're in. And from start to finish in this game, as soon as they conceded the first goal, I didn't think they were ever going to win the match or get back in it. Before we see the story of the game, Tulip Reese from Starbridge wins the replica jersey, a Villa fan, I imagine. Um, I think John Gregory's also ready to talk to us, Andy, so as soon as we can, let's get back to the Riverside. And have a word with um, a very happy John Gregory as well, I would have thought tonight. John, good evening to you. Good evening, how are you, Rich? We're very well, thank you, my friend. So, w w where did you find the inspiration for that sort of form? Where's it all come from? What, what was the change? Um, no, no change, really. Well, as you know, uh, I've been sitting up in the stand for the last uh, couple of months, and things have certainly uh, improved. <laughs> I just wonder, John, when he took Carbone, he said there he, he was a little surprised at how easy the victory came tonight. Were you? Well, um, yeah, I suppose towards the end it was, um, it was a, an emphatic victory, but um, I don't want to take anything away from the Villa boys, you no. know. We've uh, worked exceptionally hard tonight, 
And even at 4-0, we were still defending, uh, working hard to try and get the ball back. Um, and uh, I think my players can take a lot of credit from that. People will probably uh, poo-poo this victory as they normally do, you know, uh, with us. Uh, we're not the media darlings that we maybe were 12 <laughs> months ago. Um, but um, you've still got to come to somewhere like this. It's still a difficult place to get a result. And you've still got to play well. And you've still got to score goals. And you've still got to stop the opposition from playing as well. And uh, we did that exceptionally well all the, all the way through the team. So what is the major difference, John, in these last eight games as opposed to that middle nine you had? Uh, I think um, it is no coincidence. I've sat upstairs and I've allowed it players to play. It can't be just play. that. Well, Quite. some of that is, is we've allowed the players to play. And, um, you know, with me out of the way, I must say it does give them a little bit more freedom to express themselves. And, um, but there are, the, the blend of the sides better. Um, without doubt, we initially put um, uh, Georgie Boateng and, and Ian Taylor in the centre mm. midfield and allowed Merce to go and do his things. We got a lot better balance with the side than, than maybe we did earlier on. I was playing one or two players maybe out of position. But um, since we got Boateng and Taylor in there, and Stoney's come in and done a fantastic mm. job, I was surprised he didn't actually get man of the match tonight. He's a, he's a regular 8 out of 10 guy. And um, again, he's had, a, he's had another great game tonight. But defensively as well, we're looking very solid. Big David gives us uh, plenty of composure at the back, and, and the three central defenders are playing exceptionally well. And uh, I just hope that uh, they keep reminding the England manager how well they're doing. John, we'll have a look at the story of the game with you, if you don't mind. But uh, on the business of you sitting in, in the stand there, then, was that your idea, or did the players say to you, you, hey, sling your hook. No, well, um, the FA asked me to sit up there. <laughs> yeah, I know that, but when that band was up. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was the best seven grand I ever spent, I must say. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, it, um, I just felt that I'm much better off sat upstairs. I just wondered, John, as we look at these goals going in, Benito Carboni, how impressed have you been with the little Italian? Well, he's got his act together over the last couple of weeks in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's only got one thing in his mind here when Josh Jim puts him in. Uh, big Gary there trying to play offside. I think the left backs played him on. Uh, he's he's done uh, he's done exceptionally well. I think there was a chance of him going back to Italy, mm -hmm. but the window, as you know, closed in, in Italy on January the 31st. So he knows he's here now to the, at least to the end of the season, and uh, he's got his head down and uh, he's getting fully focused on on the job in hand. Do you feel that with the two little lads, as we call them, up front, that you? have got enough there variation John to cope with most situations well I'd have liked to have you up, up front mate to be fair <laughs> hey, I'd like to be there paying me that much money son chuck one in. now you're getting more money at Sky what are you on about <laughs> um, you can take a drop could you how's George Burting after the incident with Gascoigne John he's fine um, George has had a little bit of a groin strain which he picked up in the last couple of days on the training ground he, and as you can see from the way that he plays he gets his fair share of knocks and bumps and um, we took him off really as a precaution and it was good to get Ian Taylor back on the pitch as well because he did a great job. When he went on he just sat with uh, Janino and didn't allow Janino to, to get a kick because we always felt that he might be a problem to us um, the longer the game wore on. I'm just thinking, John, you're talking about bringing players in. It must have been nice to be able to get Lee Henry on for quite a bit of time, second half. Yeah, he's, uh, he's had a bad injury, as you know. He's out for a long time. Uh, but he's not been able to get straight back in the side because the ones ahead of him are, are playing so well. As I say, Stoney and, uh, you know, we had the luxury of having Ian Taylor on the bench tonight. Mm. Um, but Merson's been outstanding for us tonight. It was a difficult game for him. Uh, but, sorry, I meant he's been outstanding for us this season. Uh, it, it's been a difficult game for him tonight, coming back to uh, the Riverside. But um, he's, he's done exceptionally well and played, a, played his part in a very good. Didn't uh, team enjoy coming off, John, did he? No, he didn't. But uh, he's all right. Yeah, you'd rather, bit, you'd rather see moody. people up. Sorry, John. I'm just saying you'd rather see people upset at coming off, wouldn't you? Well, I'll be disappointed if somebody come off and he was happy to come <laughs> off. So. And Benny, just a quick word on Benny. He, he's talking positively about staying, John. Are, are you talking to him or his representatives yeah, about we, him we, staying? We spoke, we spoke to him, Richard, uh, spoke to his agents in the last few days. And um, after the initial shock of uh, what he told me what he wants, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I sat down with him and, and obviously we would like him to stay. But uh, it has to be right for, for everybody. And um, although... Um, I said we're not actually rushing into anything at the moment, but uh, we've got between now and possibly the end of March to make sure that we secure him for next season. And but, Super uh, Dion, what sort of shape is he in? Oh, he's in great shape. He's in great shape. He's recovered exceptionally well. And uh, Will he play this season again? Well, he's penciled in one or two dates. I don't want to say what they are, but uh, he's penciled in one or two dates. Cup and, final, uh, perhaps? Um, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you, you wouldn't be able to live that down with us in the final, would you? <laughs> I'd, I'd be all right with that. <laughs> Andy would be all right. John, I look forward to seeing you at the weekend. Thanks, Richard. Thanks very much for your help Thanks, tonight. Bye now. Appreciate it, John. Cheers. Villa.